All right, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Chris and Cherie Geo here. Uh, we're going to get the show going here in just a moment. But uh, I wanted to take a moment to say thank you to all of our Patreons at patreon.com slash BTV Tribe. I have a feeling like this show is going to have to be cut significantly. So if you're watching the archive, check out the full show. And um, we're going to get into some very, very, very interesting things. Now, I have actually um, gone through on uh, Google Chrome and I've used something called word replacer so uh, I'll put it up on the screen here um, word replacer so I've replaced a few words um, so for example we'll go to Google and we'll type in uh, this word here and um, that's been replaced with the word recital so there's one there we'll type in another word uh, let's type in uh, Uh, that's been replaced with the word ballets. So um, we have replaced a few words like that. So as we are moving through the broadcast, um, let's type in uh, this word here. Um, so balleting machines is uh, what it's been changed to. So um, we're going to try to do this show the po best possible way that we can, considering the circumstances. And this show is about the domestic diagram and plan of internet security, which is another word. Um, and uh, realistically, what we're talking about here is censorship, but internet security. Uh, is what they're calling it. And this graphic right here, I'm going to explain what this graphic is. I was watching the symposium that went on for three days, and uh, I obviously haven't been able to watch three days worth of it. But um, I'm going to talk to you about Dr. Shiva. Uh, I know Ash is in the chat. What's up, Ash? Uh, she actually sent me this diagram as well. But this is a diagram that Dr. Shiva um, um, went over. And this diagram pretty much lays out how uh, the federal controllers have subverted the First Amendment, created these false uh, nonprofit organizations that are in the private sector in order to create the um, suppression and, um, and sidestep the First Amendment. So again, I hope I'm not using too many keywords there, but we're really going to break down the who's, what, when's, where's, and why's. Now, I do want to say before I get into it, most of this presentation that we're doing here is um, uh, Dr. Shiva's testimony himself from the three-day symposium that we recently saw. Now, I'm going to put the three-day symposium on our private servers, and I'm going to have that available for our Patreons over at patreon.com slash BTV tribe. Uh, it is about 30 hours, if not more. It's two 11-hour videos and a seven-hour video. So that's, yeah, right, around 30 hours. Um, so I don't expect ever, any, everybody to go and watch it in full. But this part stuck out to me. It stuck out to me so much because it shows the who's, what's, when, where's, and why's, and how we're not talking about big tech. We're talking about government tech. It's just been cloaked as private sector. And by being cloaked as private sector, they don't. They they no longer have to be bound by the that constitution. pesky constitution, <laughs> that pesky piece of paper. Right. But. Dr. Shiva went to court, and in court, in the court documents, there was a lot that was um, revealed, including two other documents that we're going to touch upon as well. I think I have those on my screen here, and unfortunately on the PDFs, the word replacer doesn't work, but this right here, we have the, um, the uh, Ballet Influence Operations Playbook, and um, we also have part two. Um, which um, uh, is the uh, misinformation, disinformation response plan. And then there was another report, the Long Fuse report, that is uh, misinformation and uh, about the 2020 recitals, the 2020 ballet <laughs> recitals. And this report basically outlines how all of their efforts for um, silencing the uh, ballet performers and anybody who may shift the narrative uh, has worked and how well it's worked and how it's not coming from big tech. It's coming directly from 
the federal government. Let's get into it. The sky so far away Raw consciousness does not require a savior, but rather, raw consciousness requires only knowledge of oneself and the power to access it. Remember this as we unlock an even greater gnosis from beyond the veil. From the fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation around the world. I'm Chris Geo. I am joined by my lovely wife and co-pilot, Mrs. Geo. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing today, Mrs. Geo? I'm doing a lot better. You're than looking extra cute today. The last few days, yeah, I'm. I'm feeling extra cute. Are you tonight. feeling better? I am feeling a lot better good, than I have good. the last couple of days. So I had a procedure last week, and I think it worked because. Overall, I can tell that um, there's not that same grinding kind of pain that I've been dealing with for the last several months. So I'll be able to spend more time with my tribe, and I'm so happy about that. Fantastic. You know, I need to get my camera either further away from me or closer to you, one or the other, because you seem like you're way off there, way, hiding, off, in way the off in the background. Um, that's because she has a lot more stuff in front of her. Yeah, but I'm trying to get your a camera more. a little bit brighter. But anyways, um, we have some very revealing information. If you didn't watch that three-day symposium, I highly recommend that you do. But again, it's 30 hours, and so it's very difficult to go through all of it. Um, but there was a key factor that stuck out, and um, that key factor was a man named um, Dr. Shiva. And uh, I, I am not even going to try to pronounce that name. Cherie, feel free to if you'd like. Uh, Dr. Shiva Ayadurai. I, Dr. Shiva Ayadurai. Um, he, uh, I have a little bit of a background on him here, and he spoke um, during this three-day symposium. And he went over a ton of information about uh, the domestic censorship infrastructure and how this is no longer an issue of being big tech, um, but now it's government tech that we're, we're ultimately up against. So it's... Um, it was really revealing, and um, I don't mean to jump to the end of my notes here, but one thing that he said, he said, this is, an, this is no longer a matter of fighting for freedom. This is a matter that freedom has been lost. There is no more freedom. There is no more freedom of speech. There is no more First Amendment. And again, I'm very hesitant about even doing this show on this platform because I don't know how long I'm comfortable keeping it up for. I know live we're going to be okay. After that, you're probably going to have to go to patreon.com slash Tribe for the full breakdown of it. And uh, on our private servers on patreon.com slash Tribe, I will make available all 30 hours of that three-day symposium so you can have a copy for yourself. Um, because this type of stuff, you've got to download, you've got to make copies of quickly because they disappear very, very fast. They have a 24-hour monitoring service uh, with live people and also AI algorithms that are watching things as well and Dr. Shiva broke down some of this and in my opinion Dr. Shiva is very 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 credible for a couple different reasons number one his background um, but number two that all this was brought in front of a court and um, a lot of what we're going to be talking about today was actually ruled upon by a judge in Massachusetts while he was trying to run for senator and a lot of this information that we're going to go over has come out in uh, depositions and come out in cross examinations and is on the record there is no disputing this information and a lot of this information is coming from twitter themselves so these are you know several things to consider Dr. Shiva, from the um, uh, during his presentation, he was uh, talking about how he grew up in India under the um, caste system, and um, the caste system. Shuri, why don't you explain that to people? What what exactly that is? And um, before you do that, I want to say that it's not typical for somebody like this to even come to the United States. No, it's one in a trillion. And not only did he come to the United States, but he went to MIT. He started several businesses, and then he ran for senator in 2017. And that's when all the problems started so um explain the caste system real quick so for people, yeah this mind. was the 
kind of person that was not meant to ever have the chance to come to America. He was traditionally uh, supposed to dig bodies, uh, uh, dig holes for bodies to go into, uh, or work with dead bodies, or work with biological materials, radioactive materials, um, things like that. And now it's the Indian caste system. The lower, the lowest of the low workers. Yeah, the lowest of the low workers that are paid the very least um, are the lowest caste, and that they were the poorest, and they're basically the scum of the, the society that they come from. And they've they've built this caste system going back 2,000, 3,000 years ago. Um, I think it was 1,000 B.C. or, or 1,500 B.C. when they first started doing their thing. Um, and it was based upon um, the the whole story of the Anunnaki and then the the ones that came to earth from heaven and i mean they had their own story that directly reflects the anunnaki story that go that they were told to have this caste system and so they started that caste system a long long time ago and so he's broken free of that mold and he doesn't have an ounce of that um bitterness or resentment against the society he came from for for treating him like that He's looking forward, and because he looks forward and not backwards, he's been pushed by the universe to to go far in life, and that's that's really astonishing. It's really astonishing. You know, it's pretty interesting you brought up the Anunnaki, and this is a little bit of a side note, but if you read the um, Lost Book of Enki by Dr. Um, uh, Sitchin, no, not Dr. Sitchin. He wasn't a doctor, was he? No, I don't think he was. Zechariah, no, he wasn't a doctor. Zechariah Sitchin, um, who translated the tablets independently, and it wasn't bound by, as John Anthony West stated on our show many years ago, quackademia. He wasn't bound by quackademia. He, he did his own translations of the tablets. Um, they specifically say that the Anunnaki set up different factions of humans mm -hmm. in order to control them, introduced things like alcohol, um, created conflicts and wars between the different tribes in order to better control them. Because if they were too busy in conflicts, or if they were too busy with all the distractions that they were putting out there for the humans, they weren't worried about what was going on beyond the veil. And um, it seems like the exact same methods of control have been implemented upon the human consciousness from the very, very, very beginning. And you can look at the tablets as allegorical, or you can look at them as factual, or you can look at them as myth uh, mythological. Any way it goes, the methods used in those tablets is what is being used upon us right now. And as um, Dr. Shiva stated, he said, racism is very real in this country, very real, and it's a very big problem. And they want to divide us by race. They want to divide black versus white. And it's the liberal elite who are the most racist of all. These are his words, not mine, even yeah. though I have echoed those sentiments many, many, many times before. But in his presentation, he recognized it just like I do. And if I can find a little bit of um, of, of, of a connection with Dr. Shiva, I'm Native American. He's um, Indian American. Um, as like true Indian, like, you know, from India. Um, and uh, we're both brown. You know, we both have, I have more olive skin, but we're both brown. And being able to recognize the divide and conquer bullshit, um, I, I, I resonate with that so much because to me, it's infuriating to watch all this racial division and to watch all these people who claim to be about social justice and all of that systematically dividing the country based on race claiming to be the anti-racist ones well in, in fact the fact of the matter is that they are the most racist of all they always have been it goes all the way back to the time of slavery the democratic party was behind slavery the democratic party was behind jim crow laws the democratic party was um fighting against um, the freeing of the slaves and, um, and and fighting for segregation. The the person we have in the White House right now was a big proponent of segregation, and Kamala Harris called him out during the debate, and she said, you know, there, there was a little girl, you know, that was very negatively affected by your policies as a, as a child and your uh, segregation policies when it came to busing and, and schools, et cetera, et cetera, and that little girl was me right now. And she turned around on one day and said that, and the next day, oh, I'm so 
honored to be vice president for this great man here, this great man. Uh, it's all a game. It's all a stage. It's all a hoax. We don't have to um, go over that. Uh, most of you guys and gals know that. But um, I, I really resonated with Dr. Shiva um, for being another person who can recognize this kind of stuff, who is of some kind of melanin origin, you know, um, because um, uh, I think more and more and more people need to, to, to speak up. And realistically, I mean, I feel, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I should even go there, but I feel an even more sense of responsibility to say the things that I say and expose these ideas because we are living, unfortunately, in a very, very race-driven world. And uh, critical race theory is all about how, if you're white, you're born racist just right off the right off the bat. And it really violates Martin Luther King's words, um, or not violates, but it, it, it really opposes Martin Luther King's words, a man should be judged by his character, not by the color of his skin. And they've taken that and they've turned that around. And I've seen so many people who are black and brown who fall for the divide and conquer BS. And then I'm not white, obviously, but I can only imagine if the if the, the situation was reversed, how many white people there are that are out there who are furious, who are actually becoming racist because there's so many black and brown people calling them racist. I mean, you know, it just, it infuriates me. It infuriates me. And I've never identified myself by my skin color until the year 2020 when I had to. And I feel like I, I've been put into a little bit of an advantage by because of the color of my skin, because I can say some of these things that are very, very, very controversial and they can't turn around and say you're a racist. Because even though they have, they have in the past, I've had white liberals look me dead in the eye and say, you're a racist. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who are you talking to here, okay? It's just robots just spitting out scripts. I hope I didn't go off topic too much. What do you think, Mrs. Gio? I think I don't think you're ever off topic because um, even when you go off topic, you always find a way to bring it back around to, to where the original point is, which is, with with this this goes far beyond any you know just stealing a recital you know or or hijacking a recital and you know making it into something that it's not um this goes way deeper than that because we're now we're talking about um censorship at a at the level where we think it's it's big tech we really do but when you do even just a preliminary investigation based on Dr. Shiva's work, it's way deeper into the government than that. Uh, the, you know, it's government tech. Government it tech. It is government tech. Cloaked yeah. as private, when in actual fact, it's not. Yeah. This map right here, as I said, is going to outline exactly how they go from government to private sector and create this artificial buffer that mm -hmm. then privatizes. And basically, what was the words that he used? Launders. Yeah, launders, launders censorship. that censorship Launders aspect. censorship. And I was trying to refrain from, you know, emotional responses yeah. and just kind of just present the information. But it, it is infuriating to watch the amount of racism that we're seeing in this country in this day and age. And it is not at all what we're told it is on TV. It is the opposite. Right. And it pisses me off big time. So anyways, we'll get back to point here. Um, Dr. Shiva, he um, invented uh, the first email service when he was 14 years old. Um, the first form of email. Um, he went to MIT. He started several businesses. And in 2017, he ran for senator. And he ran against Elizabeth Warren, which is very interesting because you remember Elizabeth Warren was going around and trying to say that she was Native American. Yes. And um, they call her Pocahontas now. Pocahontas. <laughs> and uh, he said, you know, it's remarkable because there's a real Indian running against the fake Indian here. And that's indisputable fact as well. She took a DNA test because Trump had um, goaded her into doing it, and it came back like, what was she, like 0.015% yeah. Native American or something so like that? So little that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, since we're on this topic, you know, since we're on this topic of racism, you know, let me just say my opinions real quick on some of the things that are going on right now. Um, uh, when it comes to... Um, I, everything just fell off my screen here. When it comes to um, um, uh, some of the things that these, these liberals are doing, the liberal elite, um, the removal of the flag of the Washington Redskins and the renaming of the Washington Redskins, 
as a Native American person, that 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 makes me that infuriates me because number one, it insults me. It insults me to the point to where they they think that I'm going to be offended by the word red skin. I'm olive skinned, but I do have some red skin in me. I'm not, why would I be offended by that? Why would I be offended by that? You can take a look at other terminology like African American, with no acknowledgement whatsoever that not all black people come from Africa. There's black people that come from, from Australia. There's black people that come from um, uh, Trinidad. There's black people that come from the Caribbean. There's black people that come from all over the world, but they call it African American as if it's, 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 you know, bad to say black people or white people or red skin. I'm not offended by the term red skin. As a matter of fact, the chief of the tribe, um, is the one that was pictured on the Washington Redskins um, uh, logo. And the creator of that logo, who is still getting paid, or was getting paid to this day from the royalties for use of that logo, the artist created it based on his on their chief to honor their chief. So his memory is being long gone and, and, and forgotten, and they're no longer getting the royalties from it. The Keystone Pipeline, for example, they were saying, well, that was under native land, and you know we, we want to protect the native land. But in actual fact, the natives of the land were getting paid very, very, very well for that Keystone Pipeline to be built, and they were being very, very, very cautious about not contaminating anything and, and actually moving the pipeline around to make sure that it doesn't go through any sacred mm -hmm. land. And now all those Native Americans over there are not getting the royalties and everything that was coming along with that. They were buying their houses up for like three times their value, five times their value in some cases. So the narrative that we hear in the mainstream is completely the opposite. And, you know, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but me personally, they're going after what is it, the chiefs now? And they're going after pretty much anything Native American based. Yeah. And while this body is just a vehicle and it would be just as ridiculous as me identifying myself by the kind of car I drive, knowing that I'm the consciousness inside and I, I i still i still you know do drive this vehicle and by driving this vehicle i i'm 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 offended i'm offended but i'm not offended by the washington redskins i'm offended by these 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 racist liberal elites who think we are so stupid that we're just going to follow along with anything they say it's like when Kamala Harris went down to Guatemala and they were all telling her, go home, go home. We want orange man. Go home. We want orange man. She thought she was going to go down there and just be heralded as the savior of, uh, of, of, of Latin America. And they hated her. They wanted orange man. Go home. Because they know what it's like to live under socialism. They know what it's like to live under tyranny. They don't want that. Um, and um, they think we're so stupid here. I mean, I watched this thing on Fox News and they were going around and they were asking white liberal college kids why voter ID law is racist. I'm using a lot of keywords here, but at this point, I really don't care because I'm, I'm a little bit, I feel, I feel this topic very much. Um, and they were going around, this was back in 2016, they were going around and they were actually, the white liberals were saying, well, you know, black people are underprivileged and uh, they don't have um, they don't have the ability to go down to the to the DMV and get a driver's license. A lot of them don't know how to get ID. A lot of them don't have data on their on their smartphones, so they can't access the internet to get ID. So you know to prevent them from voting, you know that's why these voter ID laws. And then he went to Harlem and he was asking black people, you know, in Harlem, do you have an ID? Do you know where the DMV is? And these people were offended, and by the question, by the question, yeah, offended by the question, you know. It's sad. It's sad. So that's my little spiel and rant on um, on that. If you feel me, let me know in the comments. If you don't, let me know in the comments too. Oh, people are saying it's an awesome stream right off the bat. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's got here, so. I do feel I do feel privileged to a certain degree that I can say things that everybody's thinking, but is too afraid to say, and I have no fear whatsoever. And I have a unique skin color that allows me to be an anomaly in the system. Mm -hmm. Look at this black fingernails, long black hair, goth look. Right behind me is a personalized autograph picture of the racist. <laughs> the racist. The racist orange man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I consider myself lucky. They call him orange man, but he's the racist. I mean, do you ever think about that? 
<laughs> um, so Dr. Shiva ran in 2018 as a Republican. Um, he ran in Massachusetts, and he realized that in Massachusetts, the GOP and the TNC are one and the same. There is no distinction. And as he said, this isn't a left-right thing. You got to get yourself out of the left-right paradigm mindset. Mm -hmm. You've got to. We've always been out of the left-right paradigm mindset. But when we started promoting this man right here, um, everybody started saying it's a left-right paradigm thing. No, it's not. This man was different, and I still hold to this day that this man was different. He wasn't part of the left-right paradigm. And um, as you can see, the left-right paradigm uh, are working together, and they were working against him. So when he ran um, the GOP over there, even though he was the front runner, the most popular, um, they decided to run somebody else run somebody else despite his popularity and he said that you couldn't go anywhere in massachusetts in his district where he was running and not see signs for him the people wanted him he was mm -hmm. somebody that the people wanted the gop over there put in one of their own guys and um they didn't recognize him as one of them so um september 1st 2021 um there were, the word on the street was that he was going to win in a landslide in this election that he was running uh, against, and uh, or that he was running in. And in September, same day, September 1st, they got the results. And there was one county called Franklin County. And in Franklin County, they got rid of all the ballet tabulation machines. And they were all doing hand counting of the ballets. So they were counting the ballets by hand in this county. He won by 10 points. Every other county that was using the machines, he lost 60 to 40 in every single other county that was using these machines. 60 to 40, 60 to 40. So it was that that began his journey. So September 9th, um, he discovered that the both the GOP and the DNC working together were deleting ballet images. Now, let me explain the difference here. When you go to a recital, you go and you fill out a ballet. You turn that ballet in, that ballet is then fed to a machine. That ballet machine then creates an image of that ballet. So you have the images which are stored as image files on the, on, the, on, the, on the machines. So they were deleting the images that were stored on the machines. Not the, not the paper ballets, but the images. And the images is what tabulates the final outcome of the ballet. So they don't actually use the paper ones for anything. The paper ones are merely scanned into the machine. Then the machine doesn't count the paper ones. The machine counts the images which have been put into the machine. And um, they weren't supposed to be deleting the images. So he goes to the Secretary of State and he asks for the images not the ballets themselves, not the paper ones. He asks for the digital images from the, um, from the machine. And um, they wouldn't give them to him. And they said, we don't keep that information. We don't keep that information. So he had to do a public record request. He does a public record request and he gets a response, a res an email response from the, the Secretary of State in his state and uh, she says that um, the state law doesn't require them to keep the images of the ballets after the fact. And he said, "Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a federal ball. This is a fe federal ballet recital here. It's not a state ballet recital. I'm writing for a federal. I I'm auditioning for a federal part in this ballet in this play." Um, so under federal law, it says that you have to maintain those ballet images. Um, they were holding protests. Uh, they were trying to expose the um, corruption in the ballet performances 
and how the ballet performances were pre-choreographed, not by the audience themselves, but rather by the people putting on the ballet. I'm sure you know what I mean by that. Um, and he referred to a ruling, Citizens United versus FFC, which ruled that... Um, uh, Hold on, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. Let me. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong law here. 52 UFC-701. 52 UF, USC-701 states that all records must be saved in, a, in federal recitals, federal ballet recitals. So... Um, he wrote him he wrote the Secretary of State back and said, You violated you violated federal law here because federal law states that you're supposed to keep these ballet images in the computer. You're supposed to keep everything that has to do with anything on a on a federal level when it comes to a federal ballet. So um he held protests, you know, he did stuff like that. He also cited um uh, oh, oh, again, I'm skipping forward. Why am I, why do I keep skipping forward? Okay, so he takes these emails, right? The four email exchanges. The email where he's requesting the ballet images. Um, the response back. The response back saying that you violated 52 USC 701 by deleting those ballet images. And uh, the response back, back then, uh, back to him. So he took those four screenshots and he posted them on Twitter. Um, Twitter removed them immediately and banned his account. And the federal government has ruled that political speech is the most protected form of speech. Political speech is the most protected form of speech, especially 30 days prior to a recital. So for those 30 days... You can say whatever you want about your opponent. It is the most protected time, even if it's complete lies, even if it's complete fabrications, if it's all of that. It is the most protected speech. And we saw Twitter removing the Hunter Biden laptop stuff during the 30 days leading into the last ballet in 2020, the big ballet in 2020. So they have violated this over and over and over again. And what he cited was Citizens United versus FFC, which ruled that political speech is the most important, especially 30 days prior to any kind of recital. So he started looking for an attorney. But attorneys would not touch this. Nobody wanted to go up against, against government tech. And that's what he was going up against. And he realized he had a really, really, really big First Amendment case on his hands. So... Um, Lead Stories, a website called Lead Stories, did a hit piece on him, just like USA Today did a hit piece on us. And um, in this hit piece, it was Alan Duke and another guy named Martin. I didn't catch the name, but I think it's Martin Martin, actually. Don't quote me on that, though, but I know the last name is Martin for sure. These are the fact checkers. These are the guys you know that are behind all the little flags that you see on Twitter, I, I can't say they're the same ones you see on Facebook because on Facebook, I think they use different ones. Um, I know they use USA Today and several others like that, but uh, they specifically targeted him in this hit piece. And um, in this hit piece, they said that um, they did not delete any ballets whatsoever. The, the problem is that he didn't say they deleted ballets or, or destroyed ballets. He said that they had deleted the ballet images, not just the ballets. So not the paper ones, but the digital copies. And the digital copies are what the computer reads and tabulates. So all the handwritten ones can be there, but unless they're in the computer to be tabulated at the end of the ballet recital, it's not going to be accurate. And he's like, I, the only place that was tabulated correctly was in this place where they did nothing but hand counting. And in this other place, and all the other places where they use the machines, it was 60-40, 60-40, 60-40, 60-40. So um, Leet Stories was completely inaccurate in their quote-unquote fact-checking because he didn't request the, the, the paper ones. He requested the digital ones so he can view the digital ones. Um, 
Also in the lead stories article, the Secretary of State, the same person that um, that um, uh, he was corresponding with, who want, didn't want these emails out there, um, she, uh, lead stories, had claimed that they had spoken to um, to uh, Dr. Shiva about this, and he was not contacted about this at all. So just uh, that that whole idea that that he was contacted during the story was bogus completely fabricated completely made up um and the secretary of state also in that article stated that they never they never got rid of any of the ballets but he but he was talking about the ballet images so i hope you guys are following along so far i'm doing the best that i can to to relay this information without triggering any ai um well, and um, we've got chatters in the in the chat room that are helping to fill in a lot of blanks for people as well because they have a lot a lot of information to add to the picture um, that is you, oh, helping people watching. stay on on tar on track with I, what you're saying. I haven't been watching the chat, so if there's anything you want to fill fill in on, please. Oh yeah, Planet Ash especially has been. Uh, keeping the listener up to date on what you're actually saying so that they can follow along a lot easier without you triggering that AI process. Well, um, be so, careful with that too, please. Yeah, I'll be careful what I say. We, no, no, no. You see how we have our chat down at the bottom? Mm -hmm. If we have stuff down there, they could flag the whole oh, video yeah, based that's, on that. That's they can true. also flag the video based on comments too. Okay. It's ridiculous. So, it's yeah. absurd. Um, um, so, so yeah, please be careful of what words you're using there. So well. essentially what, what he's saying, um, is that along with, along with the recital, um, stuff, there's also the aspect here where we have a direct partnership going on between people that shouldn't be having a partnership and they, we haven't gotten to that yet. Okay. We haven't gotten to that. Oh, okay. We so that we're, yet. we're still talking about the recitals yeah, and yeah. How the uh, ballets were yeah how yeah the, the ballet images the were, ballet were images removed were removed from the, from the computer system and that's not what it, that's what they look at when they're count when, when they're, they're counting the ballets when they're tabulating everything yeah so he said I got a serious First Amendment case here but he can't go after Twitter because Twitter is a private entity so he went after the Secretary of State because they're the ones that are bound by the First Amendment so he couldn't find an attorney. At all, nobody wanted to touch this. So he learned case law, he learned um, the legal process, he learned all of that. This guy seems to be a genius, and you know, seeing these kind of people grow up in a caste system like that and come up with, you know, come out of it with these amazing minds, makes me wonder how many cures for cancer are just lost away, hidden in the mind of some farm boy who is working 18 hours a day for three meals a day yeah you know it's 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 a travesty the way the way the world is it's a shame so it really he filed is. he filed federal suits october 30th he filed the suits two lawsuits one for monetary damages and one for relief to have his twitter reinstated and this guy was going hardcore. He was going hardcore against Twitter. He was going hardcore against against the government themselves. And during cross-examination of the Secretary of State during these lawsuits, he came across something very interesting. She stated herself, they asked her how, they, how she was able to get this stuff removed from Twitter so quickly. She says, we have a trusted Twitter partnership aka backdoor access and with a trusted twitter partnership they have a partnership support portal that they can go to and they can say hey we have a problem with this person we'd like you to do something about it this is government this is a secretary of state in massachusetts now um so she contacted Twitter through this special porter, portal to silence Dr. Shiva, particularly these four screenshot emails. They also discovered during cross-examination something called the National Associ Association of States, um, uh, state recitals, I put here state recitals, 
Um, that's why it threw me off there. National Association of State Recitals, uh, Ballet Recitals. It's the E word. It sounds like erection. Okay. <laughs> National, National Association of State Erections. I think I could say that. Um, uh, and the directors, which is a government association of all 50 recital directors. So all 50 directors, the heads of states of all 50 states have an organization that they formed for the purpose of ballet recitals or erections. You know, the word that sounds like erections. And um, N-A-S-E-D, E-D. <laughs> N-A-S-E-D. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> um, use their force to contact Jack Dorsey, Twitter's CEO. So not only was he attacked by the Secretary of State in Massachusetts, he was attacked by the heads of these um, ballet recitals from all 50 states altogether. So they've organized together now. And they all, in all 50 states, have direct access to big tech and tells big tech what to do, what to say, so on and so forth. So February 1st, he shared the email screenshots again that he had shared in the previous year. And um, I see we have a super, a super chat. Thank you, Pale Horse Rider, much love. Um, 17 minutes later, after he posted it, removed from Twitter completely. And he was wondering, how did this happen so quick? where he was removed just like that. Now, in the court proceeding, the judge had told the Secretary of State, do not have any more contact with Twitter. You are prohibited from contacting Twitter anymore until this lawsuit is over. It was, it was an injunction. And so now he's wondering, well, if they didn't contact Twitter, how did Twitter take this down 17 minutes after he posted it? So February 4th, he goes back to court and the judge says, and he tells the judge, I want my Twitter reinstated. And uh, obviously there's been a violation of this injunction. The judge couldn't rule if there was a violation of this injunction or not, because they, he has to hear from Twitter themselves to see if they were contacted again by the Secretary of State. Now, obviously the Secretary of State isn't gonna get up there and admit that she contacted Twitter again after, after having an injunction and court order to not contact Twitter again through this special portal that she has and that the um, uh, National Association of State Erections has as well, um, which is again, all 50 heads of states when it comes to erections. Um, and so um, um, he was wondering what's going on here. So the judge says, you gotta get Twitter here. You gotta get Twitter here. I can't give you any relief without Twitter being here. So February 4th, a few days later, they go back to court. Um, Oh, I, I take, uh, that's when the judge told her that he needs Twitter. So what he determined is that big tech isn't big tech, but rather it's government tech. The lines between where Twitter begins and ends and government begins and ends have been completely and totally blurred because of those direct access portals and trusted partners that they have. And I think it goes to show too, it's not a left versus right thing because who was deplatformed? Trump was deplatformed mm -hmm. as well. Many, many, many people, Marjorie Taylor also banned. All of these people, government officials are banned. I mean, you, you wanna talk about states that are really, really, really deep. I think this is prime example of how we're dealing with a, a state as in the form uh, as in the, the the term a form of government or group of controllers which are deeper a deeper level than what we see on the surface and what we see on the surface is the left versus right you know red versus blue GOP versus DNC but in actual fact it's just a ruse it's just a front it's a front for the deepest levels that Trump was talking about over and over and over again. We've been thinking this whole time that this is a private company situation. What we didn't realize is that this was a cutout for directly for a you know the deepest of states um, operations. 
this was a cutout, a cover, completely, 100%. Everything you post there goes directly into that into that database. Um, and that's that's chilling. It's chilling because we're not talking now about just a company that started about 20 years ago, roughly 20 years ago, that um, has grown ever since to become a multi-billion dollar company. That's bad enough. Now we're talking about something that goes back to the 40s and 50s with mind control and things like that. So that broadens the perspective quite a bit. Yeah, somebody mentioned DARPA and Facebook. Um, our second show was about LifeLog. Um, and um, it was we don't even have it in our archives anymore, but I still have a copy of it. And we were talking about um, uh, we were talking about Promise Software before Edward Snowden ever talked about Promise Software, um, and uh, we were talking about all these things back then. Even I have to admit, even back then, when I was hearing these things, I wasn't too sure about them. But now it's become facts. They're not theories anymore. They're they're facts now. So uh, no, no, no. LifeLog is uh, something that. Um, uh, we need to get Ash on to talk about that. Yeah, and 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 Ash Ash could chime in a lot on this here too as well. I would just like to set up a a show with just Ash and you and I. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking maybe we'll do it on a Zoom meeting, and we'll let all of our people know here how they can join for free. Yeah. And um, be a part of that Zoom meeting, and then we'll put that Zoom meeting archived over in our. Um, in our, uh, in our Patreon. Patreon section, patreon.com slash BTV tribe. Because, you know, it, this information is incredibly important and nobody here doubts that one bit. It's that these in, this information is very, very sensitive and we don't want things to get triggered where our content is no longer available for anybody to watch. Uh, any of our content. Uh, and we never wanted to get to that point. And so um, doing it in Zoom call, and then putting it on Patreon is the best way to ensure that we can always bring you guys, our yeah. BTV tribe, your content. I was looking into um, Telegram, too. Mm -hmm. Ash is, a, is, is really well-versed on, yeah. on Telegram, so she was going to take a little bit of time. I haven't had a chance to sit down with her yet, but um, uh, take a little bit of time to kind of go through on how to, how to set up Telegram and get our BTV tribe to go over to Telegram as well. But like I said before, I don't trust Telegram. Uh, it's full of feds. I know that 100%. Um, so I don't know. I also feel like Telegram is like hiding in the shadows. I don't want to hide in the shadows. Yeah. Uh, I want to be right here in the light. But it's dangerous being here in the light. I mean, it's like being in the middle of a battlefield and putting your head up. I mean, yeah. you, can, you have a chance of, of being shot. But yeah. um, I, I, I remember watching the story of this one sniper and um, it was on that channel that I watch infographic and he had to go assassinate a general in the Vietnam War and he had to go a distance of like two miles and he literally was going one inch at a time and it took him like three days to crawl literally one inch at a time, careful with every single movement for those two miles that he was running through the grass and he was able to get to where he can hit his target and then he was able to, to take out his target. And the discipline and dedication that it took in order for him to traverse that, that, entire, that entire field. He said he had snakes coming up to him. He had scorpions all around him. You know, he had all that. And he had to be completely still, completely silent. And every single small little detailed move he had to be very careful of in order to do that. I feel like we have to do the same thing as well. We have to be really, really careful with our words. But at the same time, we're going to hit our targets. There's no doubt about that. So um, when uh, Dr. Shiva went May 20th to court, um, they asked the Secretary of State. He was up against, well, first of all, he was up against the Secretary of State who had three of the top US attorneys on her side against Twitter's attorneys as well, three of the top attorneys from Twitter and Twitter can afford to buy the, the best of the best. And it was just him. No law degree, 
nothing like that at all. No lawyer that would help him out, no lawyer that would take up his case, you know, nothing at all, period. And he wanted to know more about what this uh, Twitter partnership program is. And he came across four documents. And these four documents are the playbook for internet censorship, the playbook for subvert subverting the First Amendment and creating these fake nonprofit organizations which act as buffers between the federal government and big tech and how they're all it's all government tech now and they're becoming more and more and more brazen they're even coming out and they're saying that um, they're going to start monitoring text messages phone calls and trying to censor quote unquote misinformation from text messages and phone calls even when you're talking to your best friend they want in on that communication. And as you have said, Shri, social media is supposed to be like a bunch of people sitting at a bar talking. What's next? Are they gonna have people in every single establishment where people meet, listening to people's conversations, jumping in and saying, hold on, hold on, that's misinformation. You can't say that. You can't say that while two people are sitting around having a beer because that seems to be what it's coming down to. And we hear about this kind of stuff happening in China, in North Korea, and places like that. But never, ever, ever will we imagine that this kind of stuff would happen here in the United States. But they're open about it. Yeah. They're brazen about it. Right. They have no regard for it. They have conditioned people to the point of wanting it and thinking mm -hmm. that anybody who is for the First Amendment, Second Amendment, or the Constitution of Freedom as a whole is the enemy. And they've conditioned them because of this... Ooga Booga virus. Yeah. And it's funny, I just came across a meme earlier. And Fauci himself, when the whole AIDS situation was going on, people were having adverse uh, um, effects to the treatments that they were recommending mm -hmm. and dying from the treatments themselves. Not from the disease, but from the treatments. Guess who was the one covering that up? Fauci. Mm hmm. We seem to be in a repetition of this cycle again. Well, it, and it's it's really big. Be careful with uh, keywords you use. Well, I was just gonna I was just gonna point out that the reason why that that was such a big deal is the exact same reason why it's a big deal now, and that is this: back then, um, the the biggest drugs for that particular condition um, were basically blood poison. It was just literally blood poison in a pill um, that you'd have to take several times a day. And any doctor in his right mind would say that the risks outweigh, greatly outweigh the benefits in this situation. And there is no way that people that are already weakened should be taking something that's literally a blood poison. Um, it's like chemotherapy. Um, so, you know, he was, he's been unethical for that long. That's the Going point. Going all the way back Going to the 80s. all the way back to the 80s. I mean, he was doing things that no doctor in his right mind would ever agree to. And now he's asking other doctors to uh, to agree to things that they know in their right mind they shouldn't be agreeing to. Yeah. So that's where we are. And there is much more to go over. But I do want to take a quick break before we get into these documents that outline this plan. The documents outline the plan. It's right there. Mm-hmm. They're not even trying to hide it. They just hope that you are um, too stupid to um, realize what's going on. Right. right. So let's take a quick break just to break it up a little bit, and uh, we will be right back. My dear traveler, the purpose of your consciousness is never to destroy. Never to destroy. It is always to create. Build bridges. Create happiness. And bring forth new life. We must live in the hope that mankind will draw together and that we better understand each other. The more that we awaken, the easier this will become. Now rise. Follow your conductors and fear no danger as you step beyond the veil.
right, let's jump back into it. We are discussing Dr. Shiva and his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful presentation at that three-day symposium, trying to do so in the best possible manner um, while ducking and dodging the AI and the censorship that we face, not just here on YouTube, but as an entire country. And this should concern, in my opinion, every single individual out there, uh, especially in the United States. And there's many other Western countries that follow the example of the United States. So if the United States does one thing, other countries will follow suit. Uh, it's like Nevada and California. California does something, Nevada does, does it right afterwards. It's, it's a really scary time we're in. But uh, what we're talking about is uh, May 20th, um, Dr. Shiva brings Twitter into the courtroom. And the Secretary of State and, uh, has their attorneys, Twitter has their attorneys. And Dr. Shiva, uh, during the cross-examination, was wondering, how is it that Twitter and the federal government have this partnership? What is this partner, partner portal that nobody's ever heard of? And um, why do they have special access to Twitter, presumably Facebook, Google, so on and so forth? They have 24-hour monitoring by AI, by life people, and also a 24-hour call center that they can call if there's a problem. If somebody like Dr. Shiva posts four emails that exposes what's going on and that they don't like that. So they can shut it down just like that. Um, he came across four documents that are called playbooks. And these playbooks are playbooks like this here. The recital, oh, you don't, you can't see oh. it on my screen. Oh, I actually, the, am, I've, I changed the words um, for part one, if you want me to send it to you. Uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. Yeah. That way there's no confusion, yeah. um, you know, as far as. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing this whole time. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, I'll drop it in for you. There you go. There's part one. Somebody said that video that we played earlier is normalizing that kind of behavior. And yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, it is, but I was... There we go. That's better. The Recital Influence Operations Playbook. Uh, for state and local recital choreographers. <laughs> 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 or erection officials. <laughs> um, understanding recital mis and disinformation. And it's important to note that the word misinformation doesn't mean misinformation, that it's wrong. It means going against the narrative. It could be completely and totally 100% factual, but they'll call it misinformation because it goes against the narrative. So, for example, um, I was watching a Tucker Carlson thing, and Dr. Shiva calls out Tucker Carlson, too, and says this guy's nothing more than an opportunist. He sees the way the wind blows. And he speaks up when the wind is blowing in that way. And he said the, the, the right way to do it is you speak up when it's time to speak up, not when it suits you personally to speak up about something. But um, uh, Tucker was talking about how... Um, I just lost my train of thought. I don't remember where I was going with that. Um, anyways, we'll continue on with this, but uh, it might come back to me here in a second. But this playbook here talks about how, um, oh, I remember what I was saying. They actually have a database. The White House has a database that has all of the negative reactions to the vacations that people have taken. And you can go to that database and you can see all the negative reactions that people have had by going on vacation, you know, going on vacation. Uh, but you're not allowed to talk about it. So you're not allowed to talk about information that comes out of their own database. They call that misinformation, even if you're quoting directly from their database. And we prove that here on YouTube, where we read YouTube's terms and conditions, and that video can be found on our Patreon, patreon.com slash BTV tribe, where all we did was read YouTube's terms and conditions. And they called that, they, they took the video down and they, they actually put it through the AI algorithm because I tried to upload it to a different channel and before it even finished processing, it says you're uploading restricted content. All I did was read YouTube's terms and conditions when it comes to the vacations and they flagged it immediately. So 
misinformation doesn't mean something that's not true. Misinformation means something that is against the mainstream narrative. So um, I'm going to go through my notes here. One of the documents is the um, this document here, the Recital Influence Operations Playbook. And if you go to Google and you uh, Google this right here, except replace the word recital with the E word um, that sounds like erections, um, you'll find this book. It's not something that's hidden. It's it's right there. And um, um, this defined the, the it, it says in the book, in the in the document, this is defining the theoretical operations of censorship in the United States. Um, if you go down to the author section, which I don't know where it is exactly in the document, here it is right here. You can see all the people that contributed to this. And um, you have several people here. One that he pointed out was Amy Cohen, and she is the executive director of the National Association of State Recital Directors. So like I said in the previous section, all 50 states, the heads of the ballet recitals, all get together and they have one organization now. And uh, Amy Cohen is the executive director of that. Down here, politics and government outreach team for Facebook was part of creating this 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 document, which um, defines theoretical oper operations of censorship of the United States, and Google civics team as well. Um, you see other. And this place right here, the Center for Internet Security, which is basically the front that they use. So the government wants something done. They go to the Center for in, uh, uh, Internet Security, and then the Center for Internet Security then goes to Google, Facebook, Twitter, so on and so forth. So they've created that buffer to from them to to social media. So they can still hide behind the whole idea, well, it's a private company, but in actual fact, it's all coming down from government entities, which now have merged the two from private to public to now we are without doubt violating the First Amendment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is so unconstitutional. It's not even it's not even funny. It's it's getting into a level of that that we've we've never seen in in American history. So I yeah, I'm going to take this off screen for a second because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the links for you guys and gals in the chat room to these documents so you can look at them yourselves. Yeah, uh, and uh, you can look at the unabridged versions because somebody was asking yeah. me if um, uh, um, Isley is uh, in the documents, and uh, I'm not sure, but uh, feel free to go ahead and look through those documents yourselves. All three have been posted in the chat room just now. So, and I sent you part two in okay. Skype as well. Okay, so, fantastic. If you want to take a look. So we have the three big players, Google, Facebook, Twitter, all part of this plan um, about defending the D digital democracy project. We established a defending um, digital democracy in July of 2017 with one goal to help defend democratic recitals from cyber attacks and information and information operations. Over the last three years, we have worked to provide campaign and recital professionals in the democratic process with practical guides, training rec recommendations and support in navigating the evolving threats to these processes. Um, in November 2017, notice notice when this happened, November 2017, all this happened in 2017. Why? Because 2016 didn't turn out the way that they wanted it to because they, they, they choreographed the recital, the ballet performance, so much so, but they didn't realize that um, the number of attendees who are going to actually create ballets of their own way outweighed the number of of uh, manufactured ballet scripts and so they couldn't shift it like dr shiva saw that his was 60 40 in every place that was using the machines um it still didn't shift if there was no kind of interference whatsoever then what would have happened, in my opinion, is that we would have seen a landslide, a landslide in 2016, like annihilation. 
but we didn't see that. We saw a pretty close performance, but in actual fact, that's only because the other the other side had an edge, an unfair edge. And I, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for having to speak like this. I know it's difficult to follow along sometimes, but we're doing our best to get this information out there to people uh, while at the same time preserving our platform. In November 2017, we released the campaign cybersecurity playbook for campaign professionals. In February 2018, we released a set of three guides designed to be used together by recital administrations uh, to understand pressing cybersecurity threats to recitals and recommendations to counter them, etc., etc., etc. D3P is a bipartisan team of cybersecurity, political, national technology, recital, and policy experts. Um, and it, it goes on. So let me refer back to my notes here. Um, in this document, it talks about an influencer operator. And, um, and an influence operator, let's see if we can find it. Um, influence operator, I think it's around page 20, but No, okay. Um, I'm going to skip to page 20 though, because I think there was a relevant r relevant page there. I think I found I found something. It's on page 46 of part two. Okay, so that's um, in part two. Okay, yeah. okay. So we'll get to part two here in a second. An influence operator is anyone who has influence to change the narrative. Um, oh wait, let me skip back to this one. Um, let me find something interesting to put on the screen here. Oh, here it is. Influence operate, operations uh, conducted by malicious actors often invest time and resources in building large followers of authentic and not authentic users, bots, on social media platforms. Actors can have multiple social media accounts. They use tools like paid advertising and algorithm learning to better target messages and ads for increased engagement by platform users with content that they share. And it shows a couple of examples here. Um... These examples were created by Russia in the 2016 recital. In the Don't Shoot example on the right, they created a fake website and linked it to a Facebook page. Using paid advertisement, this Facebook page was targeted, targeted users interested in the issue and engaged them. To Facebook users, this looked like a valid choreograph for organization. Um, you know, uh, false content is created with the goal of engaging users in the we the people example on the left, the Russians targeted supporters of a presidential candidate and those of similar political ideologies. Um, they created Facebook pages, focuses, Facebook pages focused on the supporters to gain followers. They use tools like paid advertisement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, an influence operator is anyone who has influence to change the narrative. So that could be one of them, one of their people, or it can be people like Dr. Shiva. There were several people who were who were um, who were listed in this, um, and I don't know how to put this up on the screen here. I should have saved a picture of it. Let me see if I can just copy it. Actually, you know what I can do? I can I can snip it real quick so I can put it on the screen. Um, So this is out of the document. We may get to this part again. But these were identified as influence operators of concern. And I'm a little bit disappointed that we're not on there. Um, but um, Project Veritas, CD Media, uh, Donald J. Trump, One American News Network, GOP War Room, Dr. Shiva, Gateway Pundit, News Now from Fox, Stephen Crowder, Blaze TV, Judicial Watch, and Mr. Obvious. Um, and I haven't seen this list. Do you see the list that's on the screen, sweetie? Yes, I do. I think that's in section two. Um, I had that open. Okay, if you can take a look at that, that would be great. Yes. But um, they, they talk about how to identify the um, influencers. And uh, they have three different categories. Level one are people that are monitored 24 hours a day, seven days a week, personal communications monitored, so on and so forth. Level two is a little bit less. Level three is a little bit less. We may appear in level three. I don't know. Um, 
but they haven't allowed us to grow to a point of getting up here at the top and everything we've done with BTV, ILife, with um, TFR has been organic. It's just been word of mouth. And this comes back from one of my first mentors when I was in the carpet cleaning industry. I worked for a carpet cleaning company um, as a telemarketer when I was like 15 years old, temporarily, very short time, but I became friends with the owner, lifelong friends with the owner. And when I started my carpet cleaning flood restoration company, she gave me some advice and she said, Chris, the best type of advertisement is word of mouth and make um, cheerleaders out of your customers. And that's what we aim to do at IA Life. I won't plug IA Life just yet, but um, AYALife.com if you want to check that out. Um, it defines the legal framework of who is an enemy of the state. And this is where this picture comes in. So these three categories, anybody who falls into these three categories are considered enemies of the state. Um, part two defines how to identify an influencer, um, how to identify and assess their threat level, how to watch them, how to track them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up number two here that Cherie has sent me the, um, the CCP friendly, I mean the uh, YouTube friendly version. Um, This, oh, this is a graphic that, that, uh, that he brought up as well on the screen. In this guide, we advocate for, um, for a four, we advocate for a four stage approach to counter IO, which can help make a response plan. Stage one, anticipate and prepare. Anticipate those who may be speaking against the mainstream narrative. Number two, identify and assess. Number three, respond and resolve. Stage four, learn and improve. So stage one, um, anticipate and prepare. Steps officials can take ahead of recitals to make misinformation, disinformation incidents less likely to occur or lay a foundation for an, effect, uh, um, an efficient response to such incidents. Identify and assess how officials can identify misinformation, disinformation incidents and assess their relative severity. Respond and report what officials can do to address misinformation, disinformation incidents when they occur and learn and improve how officials can learn from past misinformation, disinformation incidents to improve responses and defenses and later end cycles. Um, so it goes into, into all of this. I mean, you know, what do you think, Mrs. Geo? I mean, this seems really good stuff that I think we might want to actually go over. Do you want to go ahead and read step one, step two, step three, step four? It looks like it's somewhat lengthy, but um, it might be worth it. So absolutely. Yeah, take us away on that. And um, I'll, I'll jump in if, um, if it gets a little bit too... Um, like stage one, anticipate and prepare? Yeah. Okay. Um, Mis- and disinformation incidents targeting the recital system can exploit gaps in ballet judges' knowledge about the recital process, undermine trust in the process, and damage faith in our democratic system. The most effective way to prevent mis- and disinformation incidents is to reduce the number of areas where gaps in knowledge exist, educating the public well in advance on the basics of the process and what to expect on ballet balleting day is the best way to fill these gaps. Ensuring that the information you provide about the who, what, when, where, and how, the five questions of the recital process is completely up to date and well publicized. Planning and conducting pub regular public outreach across various mediums, online, in person, and establishing relationships. I mean, I think what we saw a lot of this during yeah. the last recital. Um, we, we saw a lot of that they, end they but changed, not a whole lot they of changed the rules all at at once up and down the line and they started yeah. doing things like drive by ballet yeah, places huh? and you know ridiculous things like that um it's critical to est to establish in advance who is on your team who will respond um oh, here we go. Yeah. and um who should create a communication plan for reporting an incident internal, internally and publicly. You notice how they, they separate those two because there's an internal, um, you know, uh, an internal reporting 
that goes on where it's just internal like it it stays between whoever the social media is at the time whether it's you know one or the other um the blue one or the dark blue one um and then it's uh then there's the public at, page are you um at? page four you're on page four okay of part two um where it says build your team and plan your communications what you were just reading um it said there's an internal and then there's a public reporting now public reporting is going to be way different than the internal reporting internal investigations and internal reporting is going to be all of the information about this whereas the public reporting is going to be way different the guidelines should address who's responsible for communicating to key external stakeholders such as the media the social media platforms ballet judges and law enforcement so they're controlling the narrative like right at the root of of this um, and they're, they said it should also spell out a time frame for these communications and key individuals involved in the communications response. Let me jump in real quick. Yeah, please. Establishing an incident response team. Misinformation, disinformation, incidents uh, response should use to a degree possible the processes a, um, a jurisdiction already has to respond to other recital related crises. Um, it is. Uh, it should be able to quickly adjust to respond to specific issues and adapt to address to misinformation, disinformation incidents. Um, and again, it's important to note that the word misinformation doesn't mean that it's factually untrue. It means that it goes against the narrative, as we saw with the laptop incident right before this. So they use this blueprint on how to handle that laptop incident to make sure that it doesn't get out and quote unquote influence uh, the ballets. Although if the tables were turned and it was the other guy, it would be all over the place through the same medium, through the yeah. same channels, same, exa same exact channels, much different response. Yeah, um, let me jump back to my notes for a moment if you don't mind. Yeah, please. So the... Um, Four states of countering uh, influence operations. Um, he takes all these documents and he actually found these documents just by pure coincidence at midnight the day before he went to court on May 21st. And the judge said, in this case, this lawsuit will more than likely be a lawsuit examined at every constitutional class. So he went through all of these documents here. Um, do you see this on the screen here? Yes. Oh, no, I don't see that part. Okay. I've been looking for that part for the last 10 minutes. I think minutes. that's in part two. Either that or it's in the report. It might actually be in the report. I think it's in the But report. it's in page 19 and 20. So it's either 19 and 20 of the of part one or 19 and 20 of part two, or it's in the report itself. I think it's in page 19 and 20 of part one. Can you check that real quick? Yep. Um, I can check it here on my screen too. Um, oh, I found it. Is it in part one or part two? Um, it's in part one. Part Steps one. to counter influence operations. Um, it's on page 21. It's on page 21. Okay. Oh, that's the that's the circle well, thing. Um, that's not the... Um... Okay, well, I'll just try to read it to you. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'll take another screenshot here like this so we can check this out like this. I'm sorry. I don't know where that part is. No, it's okay. Uh, actually, I'm not going to put it on the screen. It says the 2016 ballets in the United States demonstrated to the world that potential and wide scale information operations. Since 2016, these efforts have grown often aimed at developed Democrats and um, operated by state sponsored adversaries and domestic activists alike. Let me repeat that to you. Since 2016, these efforts have grown often aimed at developing democra uh, democracies and uh, operated by state-sponsored adversaries and domestic activists alike. Domestic activists. So they're equating domestic activists now with state-sponsored terrorism. Misinformation and disinformation can disenfranchise ballets and diminish trust in the results of ballet contests 
eroding public confidence in the integrity of the democrat of the of the democratic process and the leadership transitions overall for the purpose of the report we use quote unquote misinformation as an umbrella term to describe false misleading or exaggerated uh, claims we differentiate this from disinformation which is false or misleading information that is purposefully produced, seeded, or spread with the intent to manipulate in service to an um, objective. The manipulation may take the form of leveraging fake accounts or pages, um, defined uh, these terms more fully on, on, on Appendix A. Um, the ballets in the United States are highly decentralized. Uh, I'm going to mark out some of these keywords here and I'm going to put this on the screen for you real quick. And then the one right after day. Where? Where you just put the blue and then after day and then blank re registration. Okay. Yeah. I think that's it there. There you go. Okay. So I don't know how well you, you guys and gals can see that on the screen but um, ballets in the United States are highly decentralized. Over 10,000 individual jurisdictions covering state, county, and municipal levels are responsible for administering the ballets, or yeah, the ballets, on ballet day. Ballet registration systems and databases are centralized at the state level in some states and administered by states uh, counties and municipalities and in, uh, in others um, ballet casting in contrast is organized at the local level which each locality responsible for administering ballets count uh, counting the ballets and educating ballets about the local system there is no centralized support for the aid of the vast number of jurisdictions in identifying and responding to emerging um, ballet related misinformation and disinformation in 2020 adding to the complexity the global Uga Booga pandemic forced rapid changes to ballet procedures states and counties had to quickly adapt their um, their ballet process to new public health guidelines existing etc 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 so as dr. Shiva pointed out in his presentation what they're upset about is the fact that all of this is decentralized and they don't have control over all of these areas here and they want to centralize control over this now that's a very dangerous thing in my opinion you know each jurisdiction i think it's best to have their own say and that's what the constitution says that every jurisdiction will have their own um uh, control over their own ballet system which is why when Texas and 17 other states went up against um, the ba the results of the last ballet then um, uh, that the court case was thrown out because they said that there was no direct harm and they cited a case which was I want to say was Nevada versus California where it had to do or Nevada versus Colorado which had to do with the Colorado River and they said in that case the actions of Colorado or Nevada, I don't remember which one, were directly affecting the other one. So that was a valid case. But in the case of Texas and the 17 other states versus versus um, the other states, they said that there was no direct causation. And the argument on, the, on Texas' side was, no, there was direct causation because this affects our representation on, on a federal level. So we do have direct causation. The judges came back and they ruled that there wasn't any direct causation. Um, but what they want to do is they want to break down all those barriers so it's all centralized from one location, which makes it all so much easier, so much easier. You want to change something, you change it at one level. It's basic programming, in my opinion. When I'm programming a computer program, I want to make things as simple as possible. You know, one of my rules is, for example, if I have any database passwords, if I have any, any anything like that that has to be repeated over and over and over again throughout the course of, of whatever website application I'm building, I will create a master file that exists outside of the root of the program itself. Let's say this is a program right here. I'll create a master file with all the data that, that I'm looking for. And then I write all my scripts and I can have hundreds of these. And every time this information is necessary, 
I use a variable to call to that script to create to put that variable in there so all I have to do is just go in if I make any kind of changes like that I make it in one place and it changes it through all 10,000 scripts that I have in a case like this they want to centralize everything so when they make one change it affects every single jurisdiction all up and down the line it's sounding more and more and more like a matrix in my opinion but that's neither here nor there so um, but that's essentially what they want to do so um, the four states of countering uh, influence oper operation, he presented this to, um, to the judge. And on May 21st, the judge said that um, this lawsuit will most likely be the lawsuit examined at every constitutional class from here on out. I mean, this is so big. This lawsuit was so big. And he came across a 300-page report written by Stanford that talked about how successful this program has been. And this, um, this um, uh, program is called the Long Fuse Program, and, and the Long Fuse Report. And here on the screen, if you type in Long, long Fuse, the Long Fuse, you'll, it's right here. It's not like you know they're hiding it. You can go access the website right now. Uh, the Long Fuse, Misinformation and the 2020 Recital. A final report on Recital Integrity Partnership. On January 6, 2021, an armed mob stormed the U.S. Capitol to prevent the certification of what they claimed was fraudulent recital. Many uh, Americans were shocked, but they uh, needed, uh, but they uh, needed have, but they needed have been. The January 6 situation, we'll change that word to situation, was a culmination of months of online misinformation and disinformation directed towards eroding American faith in the 2020 recitals. I remember the other side saying this in 2016 over and over and over and over again. And for four years long, they were talking about how 2016 was hacked by Russia and it was all Russia and it was Russia, 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 going so far as to block highways, going so far as to burn buildings down and all kinds of nonsense like that. But somehow 2020, they're worried about all this interference. Oh, well, wait a minute. They got what they wanted in 2020. You know what this is? This is covering up all the stuff that they did. In 2020. That's why you can't talk about it. Right. In 2016, you can talk about it. Mm -hmm. 2020, you can't talk about it. Right. Because it, it, it erodes U.S. confidence in the process. Well, of course it does. Because you reveal these very horrible truths about what's going on, and nobody's going to have any faith whatsoever. I don't have any faith. I can tell you that firsthand. I've never been to a ballet once in my life. 2020 was the only ballet that, I, that I've ever attended, and I will never attend another one again. Yeah. We didn't like the ballet. U.S. recitals are decentralized. Almost 10,000 state and local recitals um, offices are primarily responsible for the operations of recitals. Dozens of federal agencies support this effort, including the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, um, the Department of Homeland Security, the U uh, United States Recital um, Assistance Commission. Remember, we talked about that earlier. The FBI, the Department of Justice, and the Department of Defense, all working together. And as I said before, going all the way back to United Citizens versus FCC, political speech is the most protected speech, particularly for the 30 days leading up to a recital or ballet performance. The limited federal role re uh, reveals a critical gap for non-governmental entities to fill. Let me read that again. The limited federal role reveals a critical gap for non-government entities to fill because the government doesn't have the authority to do that. So they're looking for non-government entities to fill these roles of dealing with misinformation and disinformation. Increasingly persuasive misinformation and disinformation, both foreign and domestic. Both foreign and domestic. Very interesting that they use that term because that's directly out of the oath of office. 
creates an urgent need for calibration across government, civil society, media, and social media platforms. The Recital Integrity Partnership compromises, compromises, <laughs> of course it does, comprising um, organizations that specialize in under, understanding those information dynamics aim to create a model uh, for whole of society collaborations and facilitate cooperation among partners dedicated to free and fair recitals with a narrow aim of defending the 2020 recital against ballot related misinformation and disinformation it bridged the gap between government and civil society help to strengthen platform standards for combating recital related misinformation and shared its findings with its stakeholders its stakeholders media and the american public this report details our process and findings and provides recommendations for future actions. They were bragging about how well this worked, about how well this worked. Your thoughts, Mrs. Geo. My thoughts are that I, I was saying in the chat room earlier that I, I feel like I want to go over all this information, but at the same time, I have to keep it on kind of a back burner of my mind because the back burner is a place that has less heat, which will allow me to look at things from a perspective of, of a scientist that's breaking down a, a an equation of sorts and trying to find the right mix um, of emotions here because this is a situation that has never occurred before and and it showed that over a number of years not just you know in the last six months before the um, ballet recital but in the four years six years leading up to it it started with one or two companies that you know were helping them gather data then it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew to now are are all of our social media all of these all of these places that we run to to share our most intimate moments of our lives are being fed directly into there well and that's what face log was all about operation yeah. face log i don't know if you want to pull that up real quick maybe yeah. we can go over it a little bit but um, I want to wrap up at least this portion of the broadcast here. Um, and I actually, something just caught my eye here. Common disinformation tactics that have coming out of this document here, the playbook document. So I wanted to go over that right after this short little break, just to break it up a little bit. And um, uh, we've been broadcasting almost two hours now, so I think we'll wrap it up here in a little bit. If you find some interesting stuff on LifeLog, we'll go over that as well. Yeah. And, but um, let's uh, do another WTF bra that is, uh, in my opinion, suited for this topic. You're in the tens of thousands, probably 100,000 plus people here. And you did it all without burning down buildings? Without looting? I didn't know that that was possible. No shit. Boom. According to the media, these explosions are bullshit. 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 Boom. When you have a large gathering of peaceful protesters, they're supposed to burn it all down. Yeah. Boom. These explosions are bullshit. Boom. Who could have seen that coming? Boom. 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 These explosions are bullshit. No oh, shit. Let's have a trial by combat. This fight has only just begun. Keep fighting. Let justice be done. God did it. We're gonna walk down and I'll be there with you. Get up. The best is yet, yet to come. come. Sends a tweet. Patriots descend on Washington, D.C. Amen and and a woman. No shit. Boom. According to the media, these explosions are bullshit. 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 Boom. When you have a large gathering of peaceful protesters, they're supposed to burn it all down. Get up. Boom. These explosions are bullshit. Boom. Who could have seen that coming? Boom. 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 These explosions are bullshit. No oh, shit. Let's have a trial by combat. We're gathered together in the heart of our nation's capital to save. Democracy. What? And Mike is just gonna have to come through for us. If he doesn't, that will be a sad day for our country. Who hides evidence? Who? Criminals hide evidence. I had no idea! Who could have seen that coming? Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. So let every adversary against democracy, against 
Lincoln's liberty be overturned right now. So we're going to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. No shit! Boom. According to the media, yeah, these explosions are bullshit. 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 Boom. When you have a large gathering of peaceful protesters, they're supposed to burn it all down. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. These explosions are bullshit. Boom. Who could have seen that coming? Boom. Boom. These explosions are bullshit. No shit. Let's have trial by combat. Uh, somebody commented earlier and said, "Hey, Chris and Sharia, I love how you guys raise the vibe, etc., etc., etc." And and you know, thank you for that comment. Yeah, I hope that I'm not bringing the vibe down too much today. But you know, we are in very, very um, troubling times, and uh, we've been working for 15 years now, um, broadcasting for 10, 12. A uh, twelve. Twelve years. We've been mm -hmm. broadcasting for twelve years now. Almost thirty. And uh, our ten-year marriage anniversary is coming up uh, on December twenty-first as well. And um, our twelve, thirteen-year anniversary of us being together is, is right now. Is, is, is uh, like uh, is November the end 5th. of August. No, actually, it was the end of August when we first uh, went to Santa Fe. No, it was October. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, I, I thought think it was, it was October. August. I think it was October, but anyways. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey, and we we have been screaming about this for over a decade now, almost two. And it's it's sad watching it come to fruition. And of course, there's a lot of mixed thoughts. What do we do with the last fifteen years? Did we make a change? We made a change in individual people's lives out there, but we didn't stop what was coming. It still came, but we can turn it all around. We have the ability to do that. As we've mentioned before, if we would have moved directly from Trump 2020 to Trump 2021, that might have not been the best course of action because now that everybody is seeing exactly what's happening, they're losing more and more and more support and so the people are uniting. People that weren't on our side before are now on our side. And I see the I see the chat. I see the comments. And either the moderators are doing a really good job of catching the trolls as soon as they come in, or less and less people are coming in and wanting to troll. Yeah. Because they're also experiencing and too, they're experiencing their rent going up thirty percent. They're experiencing food going up thirty percent. They're experiencing gasoline going up three hundred percent. They're right there in the middle of it, and they're like, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This isn't all just fun and games. It's not just fun and games just to poke fun at an orange man because of his mean tweets. You know, these guys here and, and gals, this guy and girl, and, and the whole tribe here at BTV, they were onto something. They, they, were, they were speaking the truth. They were trying to push what was best for the world. Not just best for themselves, what was best for the world as well. And we opposed them. And we ridiculed them and we laughed at them and now we're stuck in the pile of shit that we created and i think a lot of people are now coming to to terms with this waking up and saying hey you know what people like chris and sheree they're the ones pushing the truth they're the ones who are ahead of the curve and many like us i'm just using us an exa as an example because we're on our show obviously there are many, many, many like us. So we're gathering more and more and more support, not only for BTV, but on a consciousness level to shift this into the positive timeline. So maybe we needed this space so people can get a reference to see how bad things can really get. And things haven't gotten nearly as bad as they possibly could. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and put, pull up Dark Winter real quick. Well, um, and I found information about that life log you were talking about. Let's so get to I, that here I in just a second. Let that. me go off on this tangent real quick about Dark Winter, if you don't mind. Please do. Because we have heard this term used over and over and over again. And we're coming up to winter. We're coming up to the winter of 2021. 
And 2022 is very important because they have to maintain the House and the Senate. If they lose the House and the Senate, it's very, very bad for them. So they have to implement the same strategy that they used in, in the 2020 ballet to try to keep the House and the Senate. And we have heard over and over and over again, there's going to be a dark winter, dark winter. Dark winter is a military exercise. On June 22nd, 23rd, 2001, and see, this is why us old schoolers, we know what's going on because we remember all this stuff and we're connecting pieces of the puzzle that people didn't have. Some people came into our last show said they've never heard of John Teeter and I don't blame them. You know, we have people of all ages and people who have just woken up, people who had woken up last year, people who woke up three years ago. Mm -hmm. They missed Dark Winter. June 22nd to 23rd, 2001, the Center for uh, Strategic and International Studies, the John Hopkins Center for Civilian Biodefense Studies, the ANSWER Institute for Homeland Security, and the Oklahoma City National Memorial Institute for the Prevention of Terrorism hosted a senior level war game examining the national security, intergovernmental, and information challenges of a biological attack on the United States. With tensions rising in the Taiwan Straits and major crisis developing in Southwest Asia, a smallpox outbreak was confirmed by the Center for Mind Control and Propaganda in Oklahoma City. During the 13 days, there's that number 13 wow. again. We've talked about how 13 and 33 are, are, are parts of the computer program playing itself out. Mm -hmm. That's why we always see 33 victims, 13 victims, 33 days until this, 13 days until that. You'll see 13 and 33 all over the place, especially in news articles when you start to pay attention. Uh, the 13 days of this game, the disease spread to 25 states and 15 other countries. 14 participants and 60 observers witnessed terrorism warfare in slow motion. Discussions, debates, some rather heated, and uh, decisions focused on public health response, lack of an adequate supply of smallpox, smallpox vacations, roles and missions of federal and state governments, civil, civil liberties associated with quarantine and isolation, the role of DOD, which sounds like Dungeons and Dragons. No, that's DAD, I guess. Uh, the potential military response to the anonymous attack. Additionally, a predictable 24-7 news cycle quickly developed that focused the nation on the, of the world on the attack and the response. Five representatives from National Press Corps, including print and broadcast, participated in the game and conducted a lengthy press conference with the president. Key players, the president... Uh, National Security Advisor, Director of Central Intelligence, Secretary of Defense, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, findings. An attack on the United States with biological weapons could threaten vital national um, security interests, massive civilian casualties, breakdown in essential institutions, violations of the democratic process. Violation of the democratic process. Civil, disobedience, uh, civil disorder, loss of confidence in government, and reduced U.S. strategic flexibility abroad are among the ways a biological attack might compromise U.S. security. Current organization structures and, ca and capabilities are not well suited for the management of BW attacks. Major fault lines exist between uh, different levels of government, federal, state, and local, between government and the private sector, among different institutions and agencies within the public and private sector. These quote-unquote disconnects could impede situational awareness and compromise the ability to limit loss of life, suffering, and economic damage. This is from 2001. They were talking about how there's major fault lines which exist between the different levels of government, federal, state, and local, and between the private sector. And they've used this Uga Booga virus to subvert all of that and break all of those bounds. Mm -hmm. Those fault lines were put there for a reason. They were put there for checks and balances. They were put there to ensure there's no cons um, consolidation of power. They were put there to ensure free speech. They were put there to ensure the Constitution. That's the reason those are in place. So they're talking about taking down the checks and balances and consolidating power like a tyrannical dictator. And that's exactly what they've done in 2021. It's undeniable. I can go on about this document, but um, when you hear them use the term dark winter, know that they're using this term here.
mm-hmm. and they're threatening. You think what happened in 2020 was bad? Just wait till we release what we're really planning to release. And we've speculated that they released something even worse in Wuhan. Here, I'll show you. Wuhan live streaming yeah. cameras. I'm the one that brought this to his attention a few weeks yeah. ago. Let me find another one. You can actually go, yeah. All right. That's not in a... Oh, this one's actually online now. Oh, they're back online. Oh, that's interesting. Are these in Wuhan? No, these no, are those, similar live cameras. Those are similar oh, live cameras. Oh, here we go. Sorry, I take that back. Unfortunately, this webcam is currently offline. As soon as the broadcast resumes, it will reappear on this page. But you can watch similar live cams or popular webcams on their website. Yeah. Um, a couple weeks ago when I looked into this, I was looking for live cams. at. There's another one. Construction site of hospital in Wuhan offline. Go down to household hospital construction website. Offline, all of them are offline. Um, webcam of construction um, of the Wuhan hospital, offline. Um, webcam with views of Wuhan, China, offline. I'm telling you, I think they yeah, released uh, so something bad. All yeah. the Wuhan cameras have been taken offline. As you were saying, go ahead. You you go you go ahead with that idea because I know what you're going to say. I was about to say it, but you go for it. Well, I was just going to say I think they released something very bad there, at just to prove that they could, and that they could control it, but they could also release it, and they could keep the antidote to themselves if you know if need be, and just take out large amounts of people with. You know, a very simple formula. And um, Orange Man got wind of this, that they really did have something bad, and said, okay, well, the people that are being put in place, if I'm not, are going to be the type of people that buckle to um, threats of using this um, anyway. And if I'm installed, it could be the case where they release this. Um, on American soil. Yeah, I think they have their they they have something bigger, and if they don't get what they want, they're going to release something bigger. And mm-hmm. I think what happened in Wuhan was way bigger yeah. than um what we're seeing. Yeah. So I'm wondering what's going on in Australia as well. I'm wondering if Australia might be one of their first targets with this new and improved. Oh. Maybe and that's why and they're they locking have, things down beforehand. They have military there. Yeah, they do. They have military on the streets. It's total martial law in Australia. That's frightening. It's it, it is genuinely frightening. Yeah. Um, and I feel really, really, really bad for the people in Australia. Yeah. Me I mean, too. you know, I complain because I have to wear that see through mask that I wear. But the people in Australia are experiencing far worse. Oh yeah, they can't even live for no house. reason. For no reason. And again, somebody was criticizing me for saying Australia is a small island. I didn't mean a small island. I mean an isolated island, an isolated continent. It doesn't have an, you know other countries around it. But the population is relatively small. It's like twenty eight million. Um, but um, uh, my point is that. It's isolated. And if they were going to release something like that, Australia looks like the perfect place because they can contain it. They can create the mass casualties that they need and they can contain it as well. It's much easier to contain. But you know when they, when they, what was going on from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, people in the chat room and in the uh, comments, but um, this whole situation with the Ooga Booga virus happened, it was, it was released from the Wuhan lab during the Olympics, when you had athletes and spectators from all around the world, they released it there at the Olympics, which then allowed it to spread everywhere else. Either one of two things happened. Either they spread something that wasn't as deadly as they had hoped it to be, or they released something small at first with the threat of releasing something bigger. 
right. and they released something small to show how quickly it could spread. Yeah. And they they told them, look, if this was this other thing instead of this, it's going to spread this quickly and it's going to spread throughout the entire world. Um, either that, or they underestimated the um, the the body's immune system, or um, they released it without it being fully developed, and it didn't have the impact that they were hoping no. it would have. What they need to do is get the source material from the lab um, that we're thinking that this came from, that the Ooga Booga virus came from, and the guy that is, you know, a big guy in the medical field here in the United States that's a part of it, we need to find his secret files because every every mad scientist has secret files. Um, just find the secret files and it'll lead back to whatever this agent would be. Um, I think that I think disclosure and mass disclosure and free flowing disclosure is what's needed right now um, by everyone, uh, regardless of what aisle you're. Well, on. they're making it more and more difficult for them to do that. Yeah, you know, with the with these so, types of programs. As yeah. far as BTV is concerned, we're gonna do more shows like this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long we can keep them on YouTube for, but uh, you can always go to our Patreon, patreoncom tribe. Also, we're gonna do some more fun shows too. Yeah, just kind of really go back should. to infotainment. Yeah, because we can learn a lot from infotainment. Uh, the Anunnaki stories, for example. Uh, I'm gonna go back and reread the Lost Book of Enki, and then let's do a whole new show on the Lost Book of Enki. Okay. We have shows back from 2014 about the Lost Book of Enki, um, but um, you know, with a new perspective, no, we can go through, now, pick yeah. out some parts that we want to go over. You know, we want to make it fun. And yeah. we want to make it light and we want to raise people's frequencies. At the same time, we also have to be aware of the situations that we're in right now. Right. And the situations that we're in are, are, are pretty, pretty vital. And um, it's all been a culmination of the last 15 years of work that we've done. So, yeah, we're in a, we're in a very interesting time. Yeah, we Operation are. Operation LifeLock. A life log. Um, yeah, a DARPA life log. Now, um, this is coming from... Are you looking at Wikipedia? Uh, yeah, I am. Okay, so this is coming from Wikipedia, so take it for what it's yeah, worth. Yeah, it might be a little skewed. Wikipedia has been manipulated here recently. We just got a super chat from um, Alistair. Thank you. Keep up the great work, guys. Yes. Much love, Alistair. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alistair. Um, they so, did change their rules as of January of this year. They did. They changed so, the rules on what you can post and what you can't post. People were saying that Wikipedia isn't a good source of information. Information. However, I disagreed with that up until that time, and the for reason for that is is that in order to post something on Wikipedia, you've got to be able to cite your sources as well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the sources that are cited aren't accurate sources, so I understand that to a degree. But I always thought Wiki was somewhat fair, maybe not all inclusive, but somewhat fair. After January, a lot of information is missing, but yeah. for the sake of time. We're just gonna go over the wiki article real quick. So take us away. So LifeLog Life was a project of the Information Processing Techniques Office of the of DARPA, of the Department of Defense. According to its bid solicitation pamphlet in 2003, it was to be an ontology-based subsystem that captures, stores, and makes accessible the flow of one person's experience in and interactions with the world in order to support a broad spectrum of associates and assistants and other system capabilities. You know what? Can I can I stop you there for a second? Please. Because we're jumping ahead. There was still one more section of Dr. Shiva that I wanted to get into. And it was my fault. I'm the one that segued us into LifeLog. Um, but let's hold that for just a second because I wanted to get into this diagram right here. Oh, okay. And um, Dr. Shiva went over this diagram. This is where my notes actually end too. So the diagram of censorship, which is both Republicans and Democrats. Now, this isn't just a diagram that is just a meme floating around. This was actually submitted as part of Dr. Shiva's lawsuit. They created nonprofits and they created the, um, uh, the uh, where is it at? It's down here at the bottom. Uh, the Center for Internet Security, right here. Center for Internet Security. They created ISAC as well, which is right here. Um, and it was designed for the sole purpose of subverting the First Amendment. And as Dr. Shiva said, we no longer have to fight for freedom because we've lost it. 
And the long fuse report states how there's 24 hour monitoring, call centers, and 24 hour watching as well, done by both Democrats and Republicans. When you go in here and you look at the people that are involved on this list, some of the top contributors are the Murdochs who are behind Fox News. So you can't say that it's a right thing uh, or a right winged thing. Nina uh, sent a donation. Thank you. Love you guys. Uh, we want you to come on my show, uh, Sinde Live. Um, so we can spread this talk to my audience. I am booked for September. Uh, Nina, uh, we would love to come on your show. So uh, I'm going to put Cherie's um, email address here. Um, she does all of the uh, scheduling. She's the responsible adult of the house. So um, go ahead and email her there. But um, um, yeah, uh, we would love to come on your show. That would be awesome. Um, so it's hard for me to read this this diagram here. Um, but um, Michelle Tassarni, um, Amy Cohen, who was mentioned there, all of the authors that were mentioned all in this documentation. You see they've created all these other organizations like Democracy Works, um, election, uh, Erection Innovations, um, Executive Committee, CISA, um, Global Cyber, Cyber Alliance, Brennan Center for Justice, uh, Associated Press, uh, uh, NASED, um, uh, U.S. Um, U.S. something select commission on intelligence, um, the Belfer Center. The Belfer Center is actually where these documents came from. So when you Google these documents, they're going to come out from the Belfer Center's websites. Um, they've created Stanford, of course, as part of them, the Atlantic Council. That's where the... Um, uh, the report is located at, um, uh, I forgot what the report's name is. It's right here in my notes. Um, uh, the long, long fuse, the long fuse report is Atlantic council, um, uh, foundational documents, playbooks, standard operations, uh, procedures establishing the infrastructure for subverting the first amendment and censoring free speech. All the different documentation is here. Um, and then it all goes to Twitter and then Dr. Shiva here because, oh, and also Wikipedia is here named right here. Um, um, it says, uh, defamed Dr. Shiva on, uh, Wikipedia as pseudoscientist. Uh, later Dr. Shiva filed his lawsuit and, um, supported Chasani and Cohen's false narrative that Dr. Shiva is not credible. Um, starting on September 25th, Dr. Shiva was locked out for nearly a month during the U.S. Senate campaign, and then on February 21st, he was deplatformed. Uh, Tassarini uh, used the above infrastructure, which he architected, uh, to silence Dr. Shiva when he revealed Tassari's emails, uh, admitting that she had deleted digital ballet images, a violation of federal law 52 U.S.C. 20701. And that's her right here. So this is a secretary of state there um, that he was referring to in the lawsuits. And this is the chain of where it all went to. And it bounced from government to private sector, private sectors, more private sectors, private sectors, um, all the way down to um, erection infrastructures, to Twitter, to Dr. Shiva. So he laid it all out and submitted this in his lawsuit as well. So um, the presentation was incredible and factual. We have the Rockefeller Brothers Foundation up there, um, Democracy Fund. Um, um, oh, here's also the uh, Domination Software. I'm not going to say the name, but Domination Software is also included in that. I mean, it's all, it's all right there and it's all mapped out. And the judge looked at this and said, you better get some attorneys because this case is going to be huge. Not, as, not only is it going to be huge, but it's going to be something that students will be studying um, as part of constitutional law for a long time coming. And I don't know if um, this YouTube video will remain. I don't know if we'll get a strike for it. I know that we're going to keep it on our Patreon, patreon.com slash BTV tribe. Um, and, uh, we'll also need to find a home for that 12 hour video we did on January 6th as well. Cause there's a lot of really good information there, uh, which will be available on our Patreon. Um, 
and um, um, we will have that video in its full. Uh, and I also have all three days of the symposium that uh, we'll be uploading there too. So yeah, um, Wikipedia has been put on this list here, so just a heads up on that. However, we know enough about LifeLog to be able to go through the wiki article and at the same time comment on it. So Cherie, let's get over to the LifeLog situation now, then we'll wrap it up. Absolutely. The Okay, so um, the objective of the LifeLog concept was, quote, to be able to trace the threads of an individual's life in terms of events, states, and relationships. And it has the ability to take in all of a subject's experience, from phone numbers dialed and email messages viewed, to every breath taken, step made, and place gone. Goals and capabilities. See, what, what, I, what I think the reason for that is, is, I mean, the reason why private sector has gone along with a lot of this is because it, it appeals to a lot of people. Um, first of all, you get grants from the government for, for creating devices that track your steps, like how many steps you took today, um, or where exactly you went in, in your maps um, app, application on your phone. Um, you know, I... I've noticed that. The private um, sector is very interested in retaining Google, that data. Yeah, Google is tracking you everywhere. As a matter of fact, I've been banned on Facebook for the last 30 days, and today mm -hmm. I got unbanned. I tried to uninstall Facebook from my phone, and I had to get a special app to uninstall Facebook from my phone. Mm -hmm. The reason is that Facebook is constantly listening and monitoring. Everything you're doing. Everything you're doing. Yeah. Uh, Google applications, everything. There's mm -hmm. no escaping this. There's no escaping this and functioning in this society. Right. Because everybody needs a smartphone. If you have a business, you need a smartphone. Mm -hmm. You know, we have tfrlive.com. Oftentimes, Lucky will call me and say, hey, there's a problem, and I'm able to troubleshoot it from my smartphone. We just, we can't, I mean, we can function without smartphones, but it's just- We wouldn't just, be able to do what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, without them. Yeah. So, um, LifeLog aimed to compile a massive electronic database of every activity and relationship a person engages in. This was to include credit card purchases, websites visited, the content of telephone calls and emails sent and received, scans of faxes and postal mail sent and received, instant messages sent and received, books and magazines read, television and radio uh, recitals, um, physical location recorded via wearable GPS sensors, biomedical data captured through wearable sensors. The high level goal of this data logging was to identify quote, preferences, plans, goals, and other markers of intentionality. So what are your intentions for society, for the society you live in? Um, that would appeal to the people that were scared after 9-11 of something like that happening again and this time a homegrown type of thing and they were trying to think of ways to prevent that and this sounded good to them um i would i would i could understand how it would another of darpa's goals for life log had a predictive function there you go it sought to find meaningful patterns in the timeline to infer the user's routines habits and relationships with other people organizations places and objects and to exploit these patterns to ease its task the darpa program was canceled oh see that's where that's where they get you that's where wiki gets you we're shutting down harp yeah we're shutting it down yeah we're shutting down that you know that that superconductor we were going to build under texas under east texas yeah we decided after 14 billion dollars we're not going to do it yeah okay another um let's see the darpa program was canceled on february 4th 2004 uh 244 after criticism from civil liber civil libertarians concerning the privacy implications of the system so it went dark on 244 yeah generically the term life log or flog is used to describe a storage system that can automatically and persistently record and archive some informational dimension of an object's 
obje object life log or user's user life log, life experience in a particular data category. News reports in the media described life log as, quote, the diary to end all diaries, a multimedia digital record of everywhere you go and everything you see, hear, read, say, and touch. According to U.S. government officials, life log is not connected with DARPA's total information awareness. That's something completely different, they say. That's a bunch of BS, in my opinion. But Yeah, you know. that's a bunch of baloney. So LifeLog um, was um, a project. Um, I was talking to Ash um, uh, the other day, and she was telling me LifeLog was a project that they developed way back in the early 2000s. And the way they do it is they will the government will say, we want this project done. Then they'll have several companies bidding for a, a, um, a, a prototype and um, then uh, they'll create a prototype and whoever creates the best prototype will get the contract. And in this particular case for Facebook, um, Zuckerberg got the contract. And so Facebook itself, from, its, from the very beginning of it, was funded by the U.S. government. So if the U.S. government is funding these social media sites and giving funding to Google, giving funding to Facebook, giving funding to Twitter... Well, they no longer are private websites. They shouldn't have that protection. That protection needs to be removed from them and they need to follow the Constitution. That's my opinion. Any thoughts? Yeah, yeah I, this, I think this is, um, this is something that's continued to this day and only grown and grown and grown and grown and grown to this day. And I don't think... Um, that it ever stopped, and I do think it's a part of the total information awareness. Yeah, um, but here's the thing. As I was saying, you know, during the conversation I had with Ash, I was telling her, you know, I, I, this is, I don't know how I feel about Snowden. I've said this on the show many times before. Snowden, and I just sent you a link to go over if you don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. We knew all the stuff that they were doing with the Promise software. Like I said, our second show was about the Promise software. And this was years before Snowden came out. I I don't know if Snowden, Snowden was a whistleblower or if he was a government agent. And let me tell you why. Because when Snowden came out, it shifted the narrative. Back when we were talking about it, it was, does the NSA exist? That was the question. Then after Snowden came out, the question was not, does the NSA exist? The question was, is it okay for the NSA to spy on people? And they did it under the Patriot Act um, and um, in order to fight, quote unquote, terrorism. And they started going after strip clubs. They started going after all kinds of places like that under the Patriot Act. As a matter of fact, Susan Lindauer, who's a host on our station, tfrlive.com, she was a former CIA agent, and she was the first woman held under the Patriot Act, and she was held indefinitely with no charges against her under the Patriot Act. So the Patriot Act completely changed everything. And that was one thing that I first noticed. They called it the Patriot Act. Like, you're a patriot to support this. Like, this is for, the, you know, for our country, you know, for the, 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 for the, for the benefit of our country. TSA um, groping, which turned into the naked scanners, which turned into everything that we have going on now, which turned into people getting duct taped on airplanes, um, spying on devices with no warrants, warrantless spying, all that. They created new verbiage as well. And they did it with these adversaries who were overseas, locking them up in Guantanamo indefinitely under the guise of terrorism. We knew back then that it was going to turn to us because that wasn't the plan. The plan wasn't to focus on them. They were just the catalyst. I mean, they created the problem to begin with. I mean, we can go all the way back to the 70s and the Mujahideen and how we went over there and we created Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda was called, Al-Qaeda is, is Arabic for the database. And it was a database of freedom fighters that we had recruited ourselves, Big New Brzezinski, was behind it. He disclosed all of this in his book, The Grand Chessboard, where we went over there and we recruited all of these Taliban soldiers to fight a war against Russia because we wanted to bring Russia down, but we didn't want to create a direct war with them. So we funded the Afghan-Russian war, where the hidden hand behind that for the purpose of bringing Russia down. Osama bin Laden was our hero. 
He was on the cover of, of, of newspapers here. We created the Taliban. We created Al-Qaeda. We created all of that. And then all of a sudden, we use the same people we created as the scapegoats for 9-11, which then brought in the Patriot Act. And then all those kids who were bombed grew up and turned into the Islamic State. And there was another threat there, a repeated threat again, until they were getting ready for the big one, which was the Uga Booga virus that we're dealing with now, which this has caused more damage than anything they've been able to do. But the camel's nose came into the tent with the Patriot Act, and now the whole fucking camel's in the tent. No pun intended. And... Um, it's just going to get worse from here. And uh, Ash was also telling me as well, uh, the last text message I got from her was that in the Telegram group that she's talking, uh, that she's that she's in, there's a lot of talk of the staged, uh, staged alien invasion, Operation Bluebeam, which is something we've been waiting for for a long time. I, I, I have to admit, I didn't expect a pandemic. I know that they had tried it several times before. They tried it with H1N1, they tried it with Ebola, they tried it with swine flu, they tried it with bird flu, they tried it with all these different things throughout the years. And maybe the point was that they did it so much and Ash, if you can tell me the name of this tactic, because when you and I were talking, um, you were telling, I was telling you, you know, I'm just so freaking tired of this. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted of all these things happening and, or potentially happening, and then they never happen. And then we get to the point of exhaustion and we're no longer paying attention to it. And then all of a sudden, boom, it happens. And it was named after a general or a military guy who would go and leave notes saying that the military was gonna be at another place and they would exhaust the enemy's military um, by leaving all these notes and documents and fake documents to get military to move their troops from one place to another thinking that they're going to be under attack. And then after so many times and, and ex exhausting the, the enemy troops, here it is, Haversack Ruse. Haver, Haversack Ruse. Can you Google that, sweetie? Yeah. Haversack Ruse. Yeah, yeah. You know, that makes perfect sense. I've never heard that term before. But it makes perfect sense. Um, the Haversack ruse in Gaza impressed even Lawrence. Yeah, so I'm going to just... What is the Arabia. Haversack ruse? The Haversack ruse was the scheme called a for a staff yeah. officer ostensibly on reconnaissance mission to contrive to be chased by patrolling Turkish soldiers pretending to be wounded and drop his ha ha haversack freshly stained with horse's blood. So it's kind of like a false flag, but it's a false attack. Yeah. And then you send all your military there and then you exhaust the, the opposing forces military. Right. They've done that to us on a civilian level now. Hey, this is gonna happen here, H1N1, oh, Ebola, this, that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're like, oh, we're so freaking exhausted with this, at least those who are paying attention. And then they come in, boom, Uga Booga virus. And even me at the very beginning was like, ah, whatever, another one. And then they hit you with a real deal. You know, not saying that the Uga Booga virus is the real deal, but the, the actions of the Uga Booga virus were the real deal. Staged alien invasion? I've heard it so many times before, but I think that's really on the table right now. So anyways, let's go over this document real quick, if you don't mind. Um, the Pentagon issues Order 66 to terminate the Jedi program. I don't know anything about this. This was just dropped in the chat room. So Yeah, it's um, from July 8th, actually. Um, July 6, 2021, the Department of Defense announced it was terminating a $10 billion Jedi cloud project, and that stands for Joint Enterprise Defense Infrastructure. It was originally awarded to Microsoft in 2019, but it was plagued by legal challenges. I'm just kind of reading through it. Um, why was it so controversial? Um, it triggered protests across the technology industry. Amazon Web Services um, uh, challenged Microsoft's technical ability to deliver on Jedi's requirements. Um, they also claimed that the award had been improperly influenced by the Trump administration, citing disparaging remarks that he had made about Jeff Bezos. 
Um, so I have no idea what this is about. Um, but I guess it's, um, uh, it, they're saying that the DOD has relied on aging outdated information technology systems. Um, and I guess... upgrading their systems isn't yeah. it funny though that we independently started referring to <laughs> to him as the to jedi, him as the jedi. <laughs> those videos don't exist on youtube anymore because we pulled them to get our channel remonetized yeah. but it's interesting nonetheless in my opinion yeah okay so um the pentagon's announcement was met with a predictable flood of star wars references on social media many of which compared the pentagon's terminating of the jedi program with the infamous order 66 from the film revenge of the sith for those not familiar, Order 66 was a directive to kill all the galaxy's Jedi Knights, thus bringing an end to the Jedi Order. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that... I don't know what this was even about. It's okay. Um, we'll have to go over it. It's cloud it's, it's IT um, services and I guess Trump... Rebuilding infrastructure. Yeah, I guess Trump was trying to rebuild the infrastructure and, you know, something happened with uh jeff Be jeff bezos and amazon they stepped in and said no we're not going to do it and uh or we want more money or something i know amazon kicked parlor off yeah so yeah well that's where we are ladies and gentlemen